Here's a problem I'm going to work through. Uh, let's start by copying this into your notes. An object has a constant acceleration of positive 4 meters per second squared. Its initial velocity is positive 8 meters per second. Find its displacement after 7 seconds. An object has a constant acceleration of positive 4 meters per second squared. Its initial velocity is positive 8 meters per second. Find its displacement after 7 seconds. Please pause the video and copy this into your notes because I'm going to have to erase this to make room on the board. Okay, and I should mention what I'd like to do now is try to solve the problem. I hope that every problem, after every problem that I, pa uh, that I pose, you're going to pause the video and give the problem a shot. Now, uh, I, I admit that I haven't really uh, explained yet how to use that systematic method that I talked about, but maybe you already have a bit of an idea. So do the best that you can on this problem. Don't spend too long on it. If you get stuck, you can just play the video. So give this a shot, and then when you're ready, continue with the video. Okay, so let me erase this to make some room. Okay, now remember our goal here is to be systematic. So we're going to go through the systematic method step by step. So our step one is to draw the path of the object. Now this pro problem, I didn't give you very much information about the object. So all we know basically is the object is starting at one point and moving someplace else. Now the problem didn't specifically say we're moving in a straight line, but that was implied. Uh, because we know the initial velocity is in the positive direction, and we know the acceleration is in the same direction. So we were moving um, in the positive direction, and we're accelerating in the positive direction. Uh, well, that must mean that we're moving in a straight line. So we can draw a straight line path here. Uh, so there's really not much more to draw for the path for this object. That was pretty boring. Uh, but notice I put a dot in for the initial and final positions. Put a dot in for the initial and final positions. Okay, the next step is to choose your axes. Well, you can see this is going to be an example of one-dimensional motion, so we really only need one axis. Uh, we might call that our x-axis. We can choose an x-axis that's parallel to our path. How did I know the path was horizontal and not vertical? Well, I don't. If you're not given uh, extra information in the problem, you can make whatever assumption is most convenient. So we just assumed it was horizontal since that seemed convenient. And it's convenient to call that the x-axis. I'm not going to bother drawing the y-axis because this seems like it's one-dimensional motion. Uh, step three is supposed to be to break the vectors into components. Uh, but you really don't have to do that for one-dimensional motion. Um, everything is already moving parallel to the x-axis. So step three is not going to be too important to us here. We're going to start with some one-dimensional problems. So when we're working on one-dimensional problems, there's really no um, point to breaking things into components. If you only have one axis, everything is parallel to that. So there's no components to break down here. All right, now here we come to the, the key part of the systematic method that I really encourage you to follow. Write down all the kinematics variables. So let's write down the kinematics variables. Here's the five kinematics variables. Now, I'm not going to bother to write the y components because there doesn't seem to be a y component to this problem. So for one-dimensional motion, it's OK to just write the x variables. You don't need to write the y variables. Uh, and uh, a lot of people on one-dimensional motion wouldn't even bother to say these are the x variables. Uh, there's something to be said for that. Uh, however, we want to be really conscious in this series of videos about thinking in terms of components. So even though maybe it's not strictly necessary, I'm still going to show, use all the subscripts here to show that these are all x components. I'm doing that even though there's only one axis in this problem. I think that's, it's best if you start getting into that habit as well. Okay, so here's our variables. This is what I meant when I said write down the kinematics variables. All right, now what did I mean when I say write down the givens? Well, I mean to write down the numbers that we've been given. So what are the numbers that we've been given here? Well, we were given an acceleration of positive 4 meters per second squared. So let's write that down. Positive 4. So let me make a couple of points about that. Uh, first of all, remember from what I said in the introduction, if you just wrote down 4, that's not good. Let's get into the habit of writing plus signs in front of any positive acceleration. So try to write plus 4, not just 4. 
Um, and something else I've done here is I'm not going to keep writing down the units um, anymore here. Uh, in fact, in this series of videos, uh, I'm not really going to get too much into the issue of units. I think um, most of the problems I give you, I'm just going to use standard units. I'm not going to give you problems where you have to do unit conversion. Uh, it's important to know how to do unit conversion, but um, I just want to focus on one issue at a time in these videos. So in these videos, I'm just going to probably just give you problems with standard units. Um, if all the units in the problem are standard, then you're safe just leaving them all out. If all the units in the problem are standard units, then it's safe to just leave them all out and not write them down when you use your equations. Uh, in this problem, all the units were standard units, so it's perfectly safe not to write the units down. We don't need to use those units when we're working with our equations. Now, actually, some people might say that um, even though we can leave out the units, some people might say it's still better to leave the units in the equation. And there's actually something to be said for that. Um, if you wanted to solve the equations with the units in, that's okay. Uh, however, uh, again, I'm intending these videos for people who are finding this material to be quite difficult. Uh, and if you're finding this material to be difficult, trying to include the units when you work through the problem can maybe cause more confusion than it's worth. So maybe, maybe after you've gotten fairly comfortable with these problems, you can try to come back and do some problems where you write down not just the numbers but also the units. But if you're really finding these problems difficult, uh, I think it will simplify things to start by leaving the units out, especially if your math skills are weak. If your math skills are weak, then plugging the units into the equation can cause more confusion than it's worth. Okay, so again, the rule is if all the units in the problem are standard units, then it's safe to just ignore the units. And that's what I'm going to mainly do in these videos. I'm just going to ignore uh, the units. Um, not because units are not important, but because in these videos, I just want to focus on getting a general systematic approach to kinematics without worrying too much about units. All right, so perfectly fine to leave out the units. What I'm going to insist on is don't leave out the sign. That's the kind of thing I want to focus on in these videos, getting the right signs. All right, so this should be plus four. All right, now I'm um, reading along. The initial velocity was plus eight, so that's V initial X. Again, I'm not going to bother writing down the units, but I better write down the sign. Please don't just write down eight. Write down plus eight. And its displacement is seven seconds. Now, this is the one thing that doesn't take a sign. Times are always positive, so it would be pointless to include a positive sign there. And those are all the givens. We've written down all the given information. Um, but if you look at your systematic approach, what I said was to write down the givens and the question. What do I mean by the question? Well, the question here was to find the displacement. So which of these five variables are they asking us for? They're asking for the displacement. So we should put a question mark under the displacement variable. Now, this is a problem-solving technique that is really, really useful and underused, and I strongly encourage it to, you to use it for the rest of your physics course. Every single physics problem that you do from now till the end of your life, please indicate what the question is with a question mark as soon as you can when you're doing the problem. Anytime you're doing a problem in physics, or maybe a lot of other subjects, try to indicate what the question is asking you for with a question mark. Okay, so what we've accomplished is step four in the systematic method. I hope that you're following along with that systematic method, because our goal here is to learn a systematic approach. Step four was to write the variables, givens, and question. Here's what I meant by that. Write all five of the kinematics variables, or all ten if you're doing the y component too. Write all the variables, then underneath the variables, write down all the numbers that you've been given in the right place. Write down the numbers you're given in the correct place, and put in a question mark for what the question is asking you for. And again, I encourage you to try to follow this notation exactly if these problems have been giving you difficulty. Uh, maybe you can already see how this gives you a much more organized way to process the information and the question. Um, and then the next step, step five, is to choose an equation. Choose one of the five uh, kinematics equations. How do you know when you're done with step four and you're ready to go on to step five? How do you know when you're ready to choose an equation? You can choose an equation when you know three of the values. In order for an equation to be helpful to you, you need to know three numbers or three givens. You have to have three givens before you can use a kinematics equation. Well, here we know this, this, and this. Initial velocity, acceleration, and time. So we do know three of the variables. Um, so now we're ready to choose an equation. So again, you probably should add that to the notes that you have for the systematic approach. You can choose an equation when you have three of the numbers. Now, what's the quickest way to pick an equation? What's the quickest way to pick the right equation out of those five? Well, 
Uh, let's see here. We want an equation, obviously, that includes these variables that have numbers. We want an equation that includes time, acceleration, and initial velocity. And if you think about it, we also need the equation to include the displacement. How can we hope to figure out what the displacement is if the equation doesn't even include displacement? So we need an equation that has these four variables. Displacement, initial velocity, acceleration, and time. Uh, but, you know, it actually can be kind of time-consuming to hunt through all the equations to try to find one that has all four of these variables, especially if you're hunting in your mind, especially if you um, don't have them written down, but you have to get them from memory. So a much easier way is to focus on the variable that you don't care about. Notice that the one variable we don't care about here is the final velocity. So we should pick the equation that's missing the final velocity. That's the quick way to pick out the right equation from your list. So I hope that you have in your notes a list of all five equations, and next to each equation you should have written down which is the variable that's missing from each equation.